Hey everybody, uh, it's Darcy here. Uh, I am one half of the Jig Is Up podcast. Uh, it's a Métis-focused podcast. If you haven't already listened to it, you please go to iTunes and check it out and have a listen if you're interested in Métis issues, Métis politics, Métis culture. Uh, we talk about a lot, everything to do with Métis people uh, there. Uh, and we're on Podbean, iTunes, you can check us on Facebook, you can check us on Twitter, we have our own uh, website, so check us out, the Jig Is Up podcast. Now, I wanted to talk quickly, uh, I wanted to shoot this video out, I, I get a lot of people asking me about how can they be, you know, they're, they're reconnecting to their Métis identity, and they want to be proud Métis, but they don't know how. And, uh, and they're a little nervous, they're a little afraid, because they have, weren't raised Métis, so they don't know how to even begin to understand what the culture is and and begin to claim that Métis identity that they they have and so I wanted to talk a little bit about that uh, the first thing I want to say is there's to those people out there who are going on that journey I've been there I'm on it with you I'm I'm feeling your pain I'm f three to five years into my journey I can't even remember now um, but just know I'm on the journey with you I'm learning I'm not a Métis expert I'm not I wasn't born and raised wearing a sash I, I don't jig and fiddle yet I'm, I'm thinking about learning to fiddle because i think it'd be fun but the the truth is is i'm not a metis expert okay i'm not a metis lawyer i don't know the legal aspects of metis nation stuff you know but what i am is a metis guy and i'm going on a journey to reconnect to my ancestors and i i want you to understand like for me the metis connection is not it's not a connection for to be become an Indian or to get some sort of benefit or or even a hunting right I, I don't I'm not a hunter so uh, what would I get from getting a hunting right now I understand what what I do understand is who my ancestors are now I understand who they are the kind of life they lived what happened to them my family history which gives me a sense of who I am now, I started my journey when my daughter was born I, I started to have that you know what I need to know who I am I, I don't want to live with this rumor in my family forever that we're Métis or we're Indigenous. I want to prove it or disprove it. So I want to, I put in the work. It was hours, hundreds of hours of work to learn who I was. But it was so worth it. And in the end, it was worth it not because I get a payout or not because I get some sort of benefit or a right now or, oh, I get the government of Canada is going to give me a pile of money or... It, it was a benefit because I know who I am. Those are my ancestors, not anybody else. Well, <laughs> technically they're other people's too, but they're my ancestors. That's who I connect to. That's where I came from. And so now I can pass that knowledge on to my daughter. Now, I don't claim to know everything about being Métis. And I, don't, I couldn't tell you, well, this is what it means to be Métis and this is not Métis. But what I can tell you is that from my personal experiences... I I went and I had a really horrible experience with the Métis Nation of Alberta because I I quickly learned before I knew anything about Métis politics that was my first introduction in finding out that I was the wrong kind of Métis at least for them and they treated me like an absolute piece of garbage and in fact the person there tossed my information back to me in such utter disgust that I felt about one centimeter tall okay now, I'm a big guy, I'm a loud guy, I'm not an easily intimidated guy, but I felt like a piece of garbage when I was in there. And I left there feeling ashamed of myself. So thank you for that experience. But if I did that, if I had that experience, and so many others out there are going through the same thing I'm going through, and I don't know where your Métis background comes from, maybe you are Red River, maybe you are did get a land script and, and you're just reconnecting to that, that's great. So you'll be the right kind of Métis for them. But that's, I'm not, so I, I was I was not the right kind of Métis. And from there, I refused to acknowledge that I was Métis in public. Um, it was my closest trusted people, that I, acquaintances and friends and family that knew I, that I told that I was Métis. Uh, I just didn't. I was, I was afraid. I didn't know who was going to rip my head off, who was going to treat me the same way that the Métis Nation of Alberta treated me when I went into their office. I didn't know who was going to treat me that way, and I'm not going to put myself through that. Why would I? But I went on a I, I went on a journey with a friend. Um, I had a friend who walked from Victoria to Ottawa three times now, and he's going to be doing a fourth one to finish them off. Um, and they're they're for specific reasons. And 
I walked with him on the portion of his walk from Banff to Calgary. And in that time, we were able to, we were lucky enough to stay at the Stony Reserve for a few days with some people there and go through some ceremonies and, and things like that and talk to the people. And just, we were there, I think, two days and it was absolutely fantastic. Amazing experience. The whole walk was amazing. But in all reality, that was more of a journey to me than just the physical aspects of walking that distance. It was a journey of coming to understand who I was. Now, an eagle didn't fly out of the sky and flap me, or, you know, I didn't have any of these mythical, mystical experiences. But what I did have was conversations with people and lots of time to think and lots of time to come to a realization. Now, I realize that I have a pride, I have a, an obligation to my ancestors to be proud of who I am. And I'm going to be proud of who I am, and I'm going to be proud to be Métis, whether whether some organization says I'm the, not the right kind of Métis or not. I don't care. Because you know what? I'm not proud of being Métis because the Métis Nation of Alberta says it's okay to be Métis and be proud of it. I'm not doing it because the government of Canada says it's okay for me to do that. I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it because this is my journey in life, and those were my people. And I'm going to be goddamn proud of my heritage, my ancestors, the work that they did, the suffering they went through, the hardships they endured, the fighting that they went through, to so that I could be here living a phenomenal life. And that is something that nobody is going to tell me to not be proud of. So I want all of you out there that are trying to reconnect and you're you're nervous. You don't understand what it is to be made to. You don't know the culture. You know what? Send me send me your story. Podcast at gmail.com. All one word. In a couple of paragraphs, send me what your thoughts, your feelings, what you think about your journey, and where you are on your journey. Um, try to keep it as brief as you can so that uh, I can read it and maybe you know respond adequately. But let's start sharing our stories with each other. And... I would encourage you to go out and use social media. Use the people you know. Use me if you can. Send me an email if you want to know if there's elders in your area. I'll find out for you. I'll dig that information up. I, I got time. I try. I got time. And uh, But it's it's really important for me to, to let you know that you're not alone. You're not alone on this journey. This isn't a journey for an organization or for a right. Uh, I don't believe that the most of the people out there that are trying to reconnect with their Métis heritage... And, and ancestry, I don't believe you're doing it to because you need a hunting right, because you don't want to pay for a hunting license, or or because you think there's a big cash payout at the end of this from the government, or because you're going to be an Indian now and you don't have to pay taxes. I don't believe that 99.9% .9 of you out there trying to reconnect are doing it for those reasons. Okay, I do believe that you're doing it for your own personal reasons, and they might be different than mine. But at the end of the day, you're doing it to reconnect yourself to where you came from and who you are. And that is something I applaud, I encourage, and I wish the, you the best of luck on that journey. If there's any way I can help out, I would love to. Podcast at gmail.com, send me an email, ask for help. Ask. I, I can't do any genealogy, so don't please don't ask for that. But just, ask, you know, if, if there's something I can do with helping you find elders, helping you find people that can tell you the stories and the history of Métis people, I'll do that. If you're in the Calgary area, we can get together. I'm in Calgary. Uh... But I have friends all across this country that I've made on my journey through social media, through real life, actually meeting people in person. God, I know, crazy concept. And listen to the podcast and get to understand some of the issues that face Métis people. And, and send us emails and, and communicate with us on the podcast as to how you feel and what, you, what issues you're coming up against. We've had some, some great emails so far and, and I want to keep that going. But I just want you to know you're not alone. And... and you know, we can all come together and, hey, I wish I would have learned what I'm learning now. I wish I would have learned when I was four, but I didn't. I didn't have that opportunity. And to those that would be like, oh, you can't claim to be Métis then, that's fine. I, I really don't care how you feel. I don't care what the Métis Nation of Alberta says. I really don't. You can call me names. You can call me whatever you want. You can badmouth me. You can go on social media and, and post this video and, and dri drive me into the ground with negative comments. But you know what? I am who I am. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not ashamed of who I am. Because my ancestors were awesome. They rocked. And you're not going to change that. 
So you can say what you want about me. You can say what you want about people trying to reconnect with their Métis history. Whatever. But you don't have any authority over it. You don't have any control over it. And that's what drives you crazy. So to all those people out there trying to reconnect, don't let them drive you into the ground. Don't let them get down on you. And don't let that uh, deter you from your journey. It's going to be a roadblock. It's going to be painful. But you are going to have something happen in your life where you're going to have to make a decision whether or not to be proud Métis or not. And please choose to be proud Métis because the moment you do, great things will happen. Um, you'll feel better. It, it, it's going to be a weight lifted off your shoulder. And maybe just knowing that there's lots of other people out there that are going through the same thing, maybe that'll help you out there. Maybe send in me an email and let me help you connect to your local Métis community. Maybe that'll help. Uh, I'm also co one of the founders of an organization in Alberta called the Métis Society, and we absolutely believe in, in connecting people with their community and bringing communities together. So I want you all out there to contact me. Send me an email at metispodcast at gmail.com. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know where you're at on your journey, and let me know how you're feeling. But know that you're not alone. People have done it. People are out there doing it right now. I'm on that journey with you. So listen to the podcast. Send me an email. And let's bring you into the fold. Let's get you united with other people. And let's get you feeling good about being Métis and, and proud of your history and your people. Um, if you like this video, hit a like and subscribe to the page, Keeping It Real. And if, uh, if you didn't, well, I'm sorry. I'm not here to please you. So I hope you liked it. I hope those of people out there that are trying to reconnect can understand that, that they're not alone. And... We all need to come together. Those of us trying to reconnect, we can come together and be be, be united in our, our efforts So and provide support to each other in any way, shape, or form that we can. So I want to thank you for taking the 10, 12 minutes to listen to me rant and rave about this. Uh, listen to the Métis podcast uh, called The Jig Is Up, and uh, hopefully you know, you can, you can, we can be a help to you. Thank you. <laughs>